All right, everyone, we're going to get started here. So again, thank you, thank you for everyone taking time out of your day uh, to join us for the Structured Design and Analysis Webinar, Understanding Free Bodies Using FEMAP. This is going to be presented by Russ Hilly, who's one of our senior analysts. Um, we can move to the next slide. Now, a little bit of information for those who are not familiar with us. Uh, SDA stands for Structural Design and Analysis. We're a team of over 14 engineering analysts. We actively support our clients across multiple industries with advanced structural, composites, nonlinear analysis. It includes everything from modeling to analysis, uh, developing test plans, and any advanced analysis uh, type work, uh, nonlinear. Uh, at our core, we're a group of stress engineers. We're located about 15 minutes from Dulles Airport, just outside of Washington, D.C. Um, and then uh, you can see the, uh, some of the other things that we offer. In addition, in addition to all of our engineering service and support, uh, SDA is a Siemens reseller for FEMAP, FEMAP with NX NASTRAN, NASTRAN Enterprise for the bundled CAD CAE package. We also have Solid Edge for 3D CAD and FiberSim. FiberSim is a great product if you're looking to develop and manage advanced composite systems. Uh, we also are a reseller for Hypersizer uh, through Collier Research Corporation. This is a structural analysis and optimization tool for composite and metallic structures. And we can go to the next. Now, some of our uh, previous projects, just to give you a little scope on some of the things that we've done in the past. Uh, for aircraft, uh, we've got the Excalibur, uh, Shadow, uh, the Lockheed Constellation. Uh, that is uh, one of the nicest looking aircrafts from the 50s, uh, if you guys have a chance to take a look at that. On the space side of things, we've done the composite crew module for NASA, their abort system. We're working on the James Webb uh, space telescope, actually the W first telescope for NASA Goddard currently. Uh, we've worked with Lockheed for the Orion heat shield and um, also for just trying to get some of the mass reduction out of that for both NASA and Lockheed. So let me uh, just give a brief introduction about our presenter, uh, Russ Hilly. He's got BS in mechanical engineering. He has been doing finite element analysis for most of his career using FEMAP and NX NASTRAN. He's done everything from avionics to mechanical packaging, thermal, uh, testing of microwave systems, RF. He's primarily done a lot of work in the space and defense industry. He's got over 20 years experience uh, in the design and engineering field. So with that, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Russ. I want to thank you guys all again for uh, attending. And Russ, it is all yours. Okay. Thanks, Marty. Let me get everything shared here. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, what we're going to talk about this afternoon in free bodies is basically um, what's on the list in front of you. Uh, what is a free body? Uh, recovering grid point forces in uh, NX NASTRAN. Uh, we'll take a look at the grid point force output. And we'll take a look at free bodies and in FEMAP using the free FEMAP free body toolbox, um, the options that are in that toolbox, and we'll just present a, a couple of future free body topics that we're kicking around. Okay, so a free body basically provides an insight into nodal forces and moments that are a result of the surrounding finite element entities. Um, free bodies can be used to display a balanced set of loads or loads across any interface in the structure that you choose. So we commonly use free bodies when our finite element mesh is too coarse to um, get um, usable stresses and we're going to use a coarse grid model for internal loads. Um, we're going to take those forces and moments and we're going to extract those for detailed stress analysis. So free bodies are heavily used, but of course not limited to uh, the aerospace industry. 
So one of the things we have to remember if we're going to take advantage of our free body tool in FEMAP is that we have to retrieve the grid point forces. Um, this option is not on by default and because of the large amount of data that can be uh, uh, returned. So what you have to do is we're going to be on sending out a FEMAP here is go to your analysis set manager and burrow down into your analysis set. Usually, um, with just one case, you would go to the output request. In this model, we have a subcase. Go to the output request, and right here, we need to make sure this force balance is turned on. And in most cases, we'll be wanting to retrieve the force balance in the full model. So you have to take care when you start limiting that down to a group. You have to take care to get um, everything you intended um, to use. So again, it's not on by default. You have to go out there and turn it on. Okay, we can, if that, uh, if that force balance is turned off, you can work with a reduced load set or reduced set of data. Uh, mainly the O-load, the constraint forces, constraint of equations, the SPC force, and the MPC force. Um, this is generally not recommended unless you only want a generic free body display of the entire structure. If that's what's required, then you don't need to retrieve that large amount of data that can be, um, be in the force balance. Um, again, take care when you um, do not request GP force for the entire model. Make sure you have everything you need for the interfaces you want to look at free bodies on. And okay, so looking at the grid point force out output, this is what it looks like in the NASTRAN FO6 file. Uh, in your output request, most people have seen uh, in FEMAP in our output request, you have results destination, you have print only, post only. Uh, print and post or default. The default, I believe, is post only, which would write everything to the OP2 file. Um, but you can write it out to the FO6 if you want to select print or print and post. Um, it's still recommended to read this GP force into FEMAP from the OP2 file. And if you want to search for this in the FO6 file, uh, you can search for the string of characters, grid point force balance, keeping in mind, oddly enough, that there is a space in between each letter. So you'd search G space, R space, uh, and so on. And it will uh, take you to that exact section, section of the FO6. All right, the, uh, just continue on with the uh, GP force output. The results are listed per grid, so if you Look here again at what we get in the FO6 is T1, T2, and T3, and of course those correspond to force in the X, Y, and Z, and the same things with moments in the X, Y, and Z corresponding to R1, R2, and R3 in that list. We have things separated into four categories plus a summation. So it's an elemental or per, per connecting flexible element, the applied, um, is the total forces moments applied on a node. F of SBC would be your SBC forces uh, and MP, MPC forces on a node as well, including uh, constraint equations and RBE contributions, also a single quantity per node. And the totals is total summation. You should see coming up to near zero. Uh, very near zero, indicating that you have equilibrium at the node. Okay, so how does this relate to the structure? Free body act output is, it can be, and is very dependent on the nodes and elements, including in the summation. So in a few minutes, we're going to see that we're going to jump into FEMAP, we're going to create a free body, we're going to create a uh, an interface load and a section cut, and you'll see that these, um, it's very different output. But determining which nodes and elements are to be used is going to be based on how your model was idealized or created 
as well as what your what quantity or what result you're looking for. Okay, here's a really good thing about free map, uh, fee map that was not uh, possible in versions past. Um, in the days of old, creating free bodies was a minute by minute thing or a fee map instance or session, um, if you want to call it that. But now, when we create a free body, they're just like nodes or elements or property cards. They're saved in our database. So you don't have to remember which elements you chose for that free body when you or someone else takes a look at that model in the future. So it's a huge benefit for recreating free body displays in the future because we're going to see that you can go in, choose the free body that's already saved in the model, and you can just display it. Um, also reduces analysis er errors and rework by adding consistency to our free body display. Another thing we're going to see is you can display any number of free bodies um, simultaneously. And we have some tools to auto automate free body related tasks, uh, which these are some subjects for the future, creating loads and substructure model. We can create loads from our free body data. And we can also take free body data from one model and apply it to a, a substructure of that model uh, in a separate database. <clears throat> okay, so we have three separate types of free, uh, free bodies in FEMAP, the free body, uh, interface, and section cut. So the free body what we do is we go and the user selects the elements, FEMAP automatically selects the related nodes. This is intended to display a balanced set of loads on a discrete piece of structure or the entire structure. Okay, the interface load, this is a little different. We can, uh, you know, especially with the free body, with the free body uh, type, you should see equilibrium in the structure between the applied loads and the reaction loads. Uh, the interface um, load, the user selects both nodes and elements. In FEMAP will calculation the sum, calculate the summation of loads and display it as a single vector. You'll see that we have the green vectors displaying uh, on each node and then this yellow vector is the summation of the nodes that you chose for the free body. The section cut is um, kind of an extension of the interface loads, very similar, um, except this time we're going to select a cutting plane. We're going to define a plane by some method. There are a couple of methods of doing that, and we'll take a look at a couple of those. And then um, FEMAP is going to assume the elements and nodes that is needed, as you see here. So the cut, cutting plane was defined, and FEMAP assumes the nodes and elements that are going to be used in the calculation. Okay, free body contributions. Just a couple more slides, and we're going to jump in and see how some of this stuff is done inside of FEMAP. Um, we have this new free body. Um, dialog. This is where we're going to be creating free bodies. You're going to see in just a minute. The three types, free body interface and section cut, and then the free body contributions that are mentioned here in this slide. Um, your applied loads, your reactions or results of SPC, uh, the multi point reactions, results of MPC forces, um, peripheral elements. Uh, these are the uh, effects of elements surrounding the elements you've selected for your free body. Uh, the free body elements, the effects of the elements selected by the user or by FEMAP, and the nodal summation is the summation of values from the solver, not FEMAP calculated values at each node. Okay, the default contributions and most commonly used are what you see checked in the uh, slide here, the applied reaction, multipoint reaction, and peripheral. This is going to provide the forces and monuments acting on your selection. Okay, as I mentioned a little earlier, um, we can 
retrieve the grid point force balance to take full advantage of the free body tool, but the result quantities can be obtained as well um, for you know the balanced set of loads on your structure. Uh, VMAP by default is going to um, create the O load, the SBC force, and MPC force output that you can use to get a balanced um, load view on your structure. If you want interface loads or section cuts, again, we have to turn on the grid point force and then we can uh, take full advantage. So the first three rows represent default output requests in FEMAP that you can display a balanced free body of your entire structure. Okay, let's talk about accessing the um, free body toolbox. So um, I'm sure a lot of people have found this already. I'm going to cancel out of this. We're done there. We have the post processing toolbox. No, we're not going to save. Um, and our free body tool is located in the post processing toolbox, deform, contour. If yours is not showing, you can go here. It may be turned off. You can turn it on and off. Turn on and off the uh, tools you want to show in the toolbox. So here's our free body toolbox, and we don't have any free bodies created yet, but we're going to get there in just a second. But we have three sections of this uh, toolbox. Once we create a free body, we'll be able to see this. Uh, the global section, these affect all free bodies in the model. So we can check this whether we want to display free bodies. Clicking this browse button will bring us into the view visibility dialog which we can also get to by uh, using the shortcut control Q. We select our output set and whether to sum data on nodes. Um, we have our free body settings and this is where we're going to set controls on individual free bodies. Um, we have here in this uh, free body line uh, that says untitled right now, but that is the active free body. That is the free body you're making changes to. Um, the free body you're viewing. Of course, you can view as many free bodies as you want simultaneously, but once you start making changes, it's only making changes to your active free body. Some free body tools that will allow us to send the results out to the data table or messages window or to a file. Whether that free body is visible, the coordinate system, entity selection, um, nodal vector display, the summation display for interface loads, and uh, section cuts. And then the, the third section we have uh, settings that affect how we view the free body or how, um, well, free body visualization, the symbol size is a vector scaling, all of the things that uh, we would commonly go into the view options F6. So now let's go and jump right back into FEMAP and we're going to create a couple of free bodies. So we have our um, display set to display free bodies, our output set, some data on nodes. So we have no free bodies, so it's going to say create free body. We're going to go right here into our add free body, takes us into the free body manager, which we will cl click new free body. And then you see that dialog that we um, saw a few minutes ago. I'm just going to name this free body and we're going to just leave our display mode set to free body and for everything we're going to take the default, excuse me, we're going to take the default values. So our free body shows up, we're done. Now I can go down into here into my controls and I can select what in it, entities I want to use for my free body. So I have to go down here into the entities. I have two ways I can do this. I can use a group or entity select, and we're going to pretty much stick with the entity select. But just a word about the group. If you are going to use groups, you have to make sure that all of the elements and the elements related nodes are in that group for the free body to display correctly. So I'm going to select my free body elements, and I'm just going to draw a box around my entire model. Hit OK, and you see we have our 
balanced set of loads. And if you add this up, it will uh, balance out. The nodal vectors, we can, since um, our applied loads are in the y-axis, we can uh, turn off two of the nodal displays, and there's what you would sum up to come up with those um, applied loads. So we can turn on or off our nodal display. Okay. Okay, so any of the settings you apply in this box, uh, as far as free body contributions, uh, the nodal force display components, there's a couple of settings in there. Uh, if we go back and grab another new free body, and I'll cancel this out just uh, in a minute. But we could say display resultant or turn those off. So most often we're going to use display components. Okay. So any of the settings you apply here can also be changed in the toolbox at any time. So once you create a free body using these settings, you're not limited to those settings uh, going forward. Okay, accessing different free bodies. So um, multiple free bodies can be displayed at any time. However, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, only a single free body can be active at any time within the toolbox. So we use the drop-down menu to change the active free body, and display free bodies can be controlled in the is visible or as well as the visibility quick view dialog, which is right here. We hit the browse button, it brings up the visibility dialog, and it would have all of our free bodies listed. This would have all of our active free bodies, and we'll see that in a minute when we create an interface and a uh, section code cut. Okay. Okay, so the free body vector types, depending on the free body, uh, there's different vector quantities for nodals, uh, nodal vectors and uh, total summation. So nodal vectors displays a summation at each node based on your selected free body contributions, and that is available for all free body types. So free bodies, interface loads, section cut, you'll get a summation at the nodes um, for your selection. But the summation vector is only going to work with the interface load and section cut, and that's going to display that um, yellow vector I showed in the slide earlier. That's a summation of the nodes you chose for your free body. So these can be, um, both of these can be toggled on and off to clarify the view at any time you need to, um, and the vectors can be displayed as components or resultants, and you can toggle on individual components of the vector as well, so we can view, view only the forces in the X direction um, as well. Okay, so um, we go here and we have these quick toggles now, so we can turn on or off our vectors very quickly. You can turn on or off the nodal vectors, turn on or off the moments, and display the vectors as a summation. Uh, down here in the force display again, uh, I mentioned that you can turn any of the components for the moment or uh, force vectors on or off. Okay, so we talked about these detail options just then about the force vector display again. We can go in here to our uh, nodal vectors or force vectors, turn any component on or off, and we'll see that a little more as well. Okay, the coordinate system of a free body, you can set this to be displayed in the nodal output coordinate system, or you can um, just use it in the global coordinate system. You can uh, select the coordinate system icon and create a coordinate system. Um, for displaying your free body. So you don't have to go in creative uh, new free body. You can make this change uh, on the fly within the toolbox. Okay, the uh, free body mode, the free body elements, we talked about this selection. A couple of things you can do here is you can 
choose or you can choose to uh, visualize the elements you've selected. This is more useful in a um, interface load or or uh, a section cut, or you can delete the elements, uh, reset the elements, and create a new selection of the current free body or the active free body. Okay, so we have taken a look at a balanced set of loads on this wing post, and all of the elements were selected for display. So now let's talk about these interface loads, which are very useful as well. Um, so it's going to display nodal vectors for the selected nodes as well as a summation vector. Um, unlike the free body mode, this is not likely to be in equilibrium. Uh, in addition to element selection, you have to select and choose the nodes. Vmap's not going to infer the nodes based on your um, elements. And again, when you use a group, make sure that nodes and elements of interest have to be in the group. So let's go and create a um, interface load. So what we're going to do is again, we're going to create a new free body. We're going to select, make our element selection and make our nodal selection and um, FEMAP will create our, free our interface load diagram for us. Okay, I'm going to turn the, our first free body off and we're going to say click add free body, go into the new free body manager. I'm going to click interface, interface load and we're going to accept the defaults. I'm going to hit done. Uh, it becomes my active free body. Now you notice not only do I have um, an element selection line, but I have to also select nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this uh, into a side view and I'm going to grab the element selection dialog here and I'm going to grab a box of elements right there on that interface, hit OK and just so I get the right nodes I'm going to select uh, to highlight those elements and now I'm going to select my nodes. I'm going to hit OK and it asks me if I want to place the summation vector at the center of the free body nodes and I'm going to say yes. Now you see we have our um, nodal vectors, the force vectors, and we have the summation vector, the yellow vector here in the middle. Hit Control G to clarify that display a little bit. Again, now we have um, we have the same toggles I discussed a couple of minutes ago uh, for the uh, force and moment display, but now we have those with um, the summation vector. We have a set of to toggles for the summation vector and we have a set of toggles for the nodal vectors. So we can turn on the force visibility and turn on or turn on moments. We can also convert this very easily to um, the resultant or displaying components. And these are toggles. So you hit them once, uh, it toggles to your selection and you click the icon again and it um, goes back. Again we have these detailed controls of which components we want to display, whether we want to display our moment vectors or not, our sum components. This is what is used to calculate um, this summation vector. So be careful when you, when you start changing this. Uh, that's what's going to affect what that quantity is. Okay, so um, I think I just said that. Um, individual force and moment contributions included in the total sum summation. You can toggle on or off. Um, by default, all of them are on and changes will affect the total summation calculation. So if you're using the values on that summation vector um, for any further calculations, you need to make sure you understand how your model is correlating to your real world. Okay, so we took a look at an interface load um, display and it's showing the summation vector, the node, nodal vectors at each node. Okay, the section cuts a little different, so like I said earlier, an extension to the interface load mode. 
uh, the user defines a cutting plane. Uh, there's a couple methods to do that in the model, and the contributing free body nodes and elements are determined automatically by FEMAP. So we're going to grab the uh, total summation location, can be placed at the plane or path intersection, nodal centroid, or some static location. Okay, and you can do all of this without uh, creating uh, additional coordinate systems set the tangent or the path to be aligned tangent to the path or the vector, excuse me, getting tied up. Um, so you don't have to create additional cord cutting um, coordinate systems. Sorry. Okay, your plane, what we're going to do is just define a plane, and the normal vector is going to be assumed to be normal to the plane you choose. Um, if you define it as a vector, your path is going to be the defined vector, and the cutting plane is always going to be normal to the path. Um, and with the curve mode, you can choose uh, a curve. The cutting point plane is normal to the tangent vector at a point along the plane, and the path plane is going to be normal, always normal to the tangent vector. Okay, so let's take a look at how that's done. Again, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn off, um, excuse me, turn off this free body. I'm going to go and select and create a new free body, uh, choose section cut. Again, I'm going to take all of the defaults, hit OK, hit done. Now, what it's asking us to do is to choose a method to create our plane. So I'm going to demonstrate this first one here, plane normal. So I'm going to go here to my plane setting, and I'm going to choose select plane, uh, and I'm going to just grab three points on my model to define that plane. Hit OK. Now you notice not everything came out on the plane. Uh, there is something to control that. There's a cutting plane tolerance here. So what this allows uh, you to do is to include entities in your plane that may be slightly out of the selected plane. So we can hit the little calculator button and FEMAP will calculate what you need, or you can enter a numerical uh, value as well. So again, you have um, your cutting plane. Um, it places the uh, summation vector at the edge of the path here. We can go back and correct that and put it uh, wherever we want. Uh, we'll just leave it for now. Um, but some of the other things you can do with this section cut is it can be dynamically moved along the model. So we take a look at our elements, and I moved it off the model there in our elements in our that are included in our section cut free body. Okay. So there are two other methods of creating that plane using a plane and a vector, which you would have to choose the plane and then define a vector for the path. So again, we choose three points. That vector does not have to be uh, normal to that plane. The path vector can be any, any vector you choose, and the summation is going to follow, follow that path as we scroll through our our um, model so that vector is going to follow that path that I set or the, the summation vectors. Okay. Okay, a section cut defining a uh, defined using a curve. So in this we chose a curve and there is the normal vector and the section cut plane is here and it is normal to that tangent vector to that curve. So if we take a look at that in FEMAP, let's turn uh, our free body off, and it'll look a little strange in this model. But if we create a new section cut free body, taking the defaults, done, we'll choose to use a curve. We have to choose a curve ID, so let's choose this curve. And your plane is, of course, tangent to uh, 
nor, uh, normal to a tangent vector to that curve. Okay. Okay, some of the other things we can do is um, I've discussed we can slide the uh, cutting plane along the model to uh, dynamically move it through our model. Uh, it can be also limited to a specific group again or a search distance again using groups you have to make sure the elements and nodes are in there and it can be given a thickness tolerance that we saw as well to allow for entities that are slightly out of plane and you can use clipped entities can either be included or excluded. Okay, so we took a look at how that slides along our model. Okay, a couple of other tools um, that we can use. Let's go back into a free body. Let's uh, turn, or turn on our first interface load free body. You can send the current free body information to the messages window or data table, or you can uh, send the free body summation to the messages window or the data table. You have to have the data table turned on and unlocked, of course, and then you can send that to the data table. And it has all your info in there for each element ID and grid. The other thing you can do is you can check to ensure that all of the free body information is in your model. So that's what that check box does. It uh, validates the tool and warrants you when free body results are potentially missing. Okay, a couple of things we'd like to discuss uh, in the future, maybe creating uh, loads from free bodies and uh, using the global local modeling uh, creating loads on substructures and totally separate models as well. So I appreciate you joining us this afternoon. Um, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer those for you. You can contact myself or any of the team at SDA uh, using my email. My phone number is listed there or email support at structures.arrow if you have any questions. So again, I appreciate you taking your time to spend with us this afternoon, and that's our demonstration. Russ, you got one question typed in. What about reaction loads at constraints? The reaction loads at constraints, if we jump back into FEMAP here, and we take a look at where the constraints are on this model, uh, those are going to show up in our free body. So we'll see this is the real reaction loads at the constraints or wherever your model is reacting out and uh, any applied loads you have. So that's what's, what you're going to see there. So that is, um, let's see, let me make this my active free body and the free body contributions. Uh, we are using the reactions, so we're getting that uh, the reactions at the constraints in this. Did that answer the question? Uh, I think it does. It, uh, they're they're muted at the moment. Uh, one more. You confirm you're using 11.2, and can you summarize what features were new in 11.2 with FreeBody? Sure. I'm I'm actually using 11.2.1. What was added in the FreeBody in 11.2.1? was the section cut, um, the ability to do section cuts uh, was added. So this was not there in previous, previous versions. Uh, the other thing that was added in 11.2, we go to an interface load free body, is these uh, the display toggles, the quick display toggles uh, that was added in the current version. And I believe that uh, is it. But I will right. I'll, ver I'll verify that in the in the documentation. Right. Most of this was in in ten point something if I remember right. And that they just Yeah the free body the free body tool was in at, in ten. 
um, I think 1031 or something like that. So um, one more question. If applied, reaction and multipoint constraints are all selected. Will this affect the results at constraints? Affect the results? Well, you, when you, when, um, I'm not sure I understand that question. Yeah, let me, uh, but, I'm going to find him and unmute him so he can ask you his question. Hold on. But William, you, I've unmuted you. Can you can you ask Rush your question? No, maybe not. Um, if you email me, I'll I'll give you the you know more details or uh, or give you a call. But right. the um, the reactions at the so I don't think I have any multipoint in here. So I would, yeah, if you give me a call, I'll set up an example with all of that, and and then we'll discuss it. But I don't believe that would affect, um, because right here, really, what we're seeing is the SPC force. So that's I don't think that's going to change what you're seeing here in the free body. But I will verify that for you. Right, so. and I know the whatever you're doing in the free body will not affect. Um, any results. Yeah. You're just manipulating the data. Right. Okay. If there are any more questions, uh, feel free to email us and we'll answer them by email or we'll call you. Um, and this will conclude our webinar. And we'll have another one next month. And I think we're doing optimization next month, if I remember right. Um, and our invitation for that will go out here in about a week or two. So I hope you enjoyed it. We'll talk to you all later.